Florida just made a decision that sounds absolutely insane. They looked at an ecological disaster that's been destroying the Everglades for decades. A monster snake that's eaten 99% of some species, and their solution? Release more snakes. Thousands of them. And here's the crazy part. It's actually working. Right now, deep in the swamps of Florida, a war is raging between two apex predators. One is a foreign invader that's turned paradise into a graveyard. The other, a long-lost native that scientists bred specifically for revenge. This is the most controversial conservation experiment in American history. And what they discovered will blow your mind. The Florida Everglades, one of the most unique ecosystems on Earth. A river of grass stretching across 1.5 million acres, home to alligators, panthers, wading birds, and countless species found nowhere else. But beneath this paradise lurks a silent killer. The Burmese Python, a 200-pound apex predator that doesn't belong here. And it's winning. Since the early 2000s, scientists have watched in horror as the Everglades transformed from a thriving wilderness into what some call a ghost forest. Raccoon populations? Down 99%. Opossums? Nearly extinct in some areas. White-tailed deer, bobcats, marsh rabbits vanishing. All because of one snake. Florida threw everything at this problem. Hunting events, trained professionals, even high-tech drones and dogs. But the pythons kept multiplying, hiding in the sawgrass breeding in the swamps, consuming the Everglades from within. Then, Florida made a decision that would change everything. A gamble that could either save the Everglades or make things catastrophically worse. To understand how we got here, we need to go back to August 24th, 1992. Hurricane Andrew, a Category 5 monster that devastated South Florida with 165 mile per hour winds. The storm didn't just destroy homes, it destroyed exotic pet facilities. And when those facilities collapsed, something escaped into the wild. Burmese pythons. Now, it wasn't just the hurricane. For years, people had been buying these snakes as pets. Baby pythons are small, docile, easy to care for, but they don't stay small. They grow up to 20 feet long. They need massive enclosures, special diets. And when owners realized they couldn't handle them anymore, they did the worst thing possible. They released them into the Everglades. The perfect storm had arrived, literally. Hurricane Andrew scattered breeding populations across South Florida. Irresponsible pet owners added fuel to the fire. And the Everglades? It was paradise for pythons. Warm climate, no natural predators, an endless buffet of prey. Within a decade, the problem exploded. A 2012 study revealed the horrifying truth. In areas with established python populations, 99% of raccoons were gone, 98.9% .9 of opossums, 87.5% of bobcats, 94% of white-tailed deer. The food chain was collapsing. And scientists knew if they didn't act fast, the Everglades would be lost forever. But here's the terrifying part. Nobody knew how many pythons were actually out there. Estimates ranged from tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands. These snakes are ambush predators. They don't move much. They blend perfectly into the environment. Finding them is like finding needles in a 1.5 million acre haystack. Florida wasn't going to give up without a fight. First came the Python Challenge, a public hunting event launched in 2013. The idea? Get regular people to hunt pythons for cash prizes. Thousands of participants flooded the Everglades, armed with hooks, bags, and determination. The results? After a month, hunters caught just 68 pythons. 68 out of potentially hundreds of thousands. It was a PR success, but an ecological failure. So, Florida doubled down. They hired professional python hunters. 
skilled trackers who could navigate the swamps, spot camouflage snakes, and work day and night. These hunters have now removed over 20,000 pythons from the Everglades. 20,000 sounds impressive, right? Wrong. Because pythons reproduce faster than humans can hunt them. A single female python can lay 50 to 100 eggs at a time. Do the math. Even removing 2,000 pythons a year barely makes a dent when thousands of new snakes are being born. Then came the high-tech solutions. Wildlife officials started using detector dogs trained to sniff out pythons. They deployed drones with thermal imaging to spot snakes from above. They even tried radio tracking Judas snakes male pythons fitted with transmitters that would lead researchers to breeding females. Some of these methods worked on a small scale, but they were expensive, labor-intensive, and ultimately unsustainable. The Everglades is too vast, the pythons too elusive. Every solution felt like using a bucket to bail out the Titanic. By 2018, scientists faced a grim reality. Traditional removal methods were failing. The python population was stabilizing at best, growing at worst, and the ecological damage? Irreversible in some areas. Florida needed something radical, something that worked with nature instead of against it. They needed a predator. Enter the eastern indigo snake, North America's longest native snake, reaching up to eight feet in length, jet black, muscular, Non-venomous, but incredibly powerful. And here's the key, they eat other snakes. For decades, the eastern indigo was endangered, nearly wiped out by habitat loss, and rattlesnake hunters who killed them by accident. But conservationists never gave up. They bred them in captivity, studied their behavior, protected their habitat, and slowly, the eastern indigo started to recover. Then someone asked the million-dollar question, could they eat Burmese pythons? The science was promising. Eastern indigos are ophiophagus snake eaters. They prey on rattlesnakes, corn snakes, even small pythons. They're immune to certain venoms and incredibly aggressive hunters. In controlled studies, young indigos showed they could kill and consume juvenile pythons. But releasing them into the Everglades? That was controversial. Critics raised concerns. What if the indigos couldn't compete with adult pythons? What if pythons ate them instead? What if introducing more snakes just made the problem worse? Florida's response was rooted in long-term conservation strategy. This wasn't just about killing pythons. It was about restoring balance. The eastern indigo wasn't an invasive species. It was native to Florida. It belonged here, and decades of captive breeding meant there were healthy populations ready for release. In 2018, Florida began reintroducing eastern indigos into protected areas of the Everglades. Not thousands at first, just dozens. Carefully selected individuals, monitored with radio transmitters, tracked by dedicated teams of biologists. The public reaction was mixed. Some people called it genius. Others called it insane. Fighting fire with fire, critics said. You're just adding more snakes to a snake problem. But Florida wasn't backing down. They had a plan, and they were willing to wait years to see if it worked. Fast forward to 2023. Five years after the first releases, the data started coming in. And it was extraordinary. Eastern indigos were thriving. They were adapting to the Everglades ecosystem, they were hunting, and most importantly, they were breeding in the wild. Motion-activated cameras captured incredible footage. An eastern indigo locked in combat with a python, another indigo consuming a juvenile python whole. These weren't isolated incidents. This was predator-prey dynamics playing out in real time. But the real success wasn't just dead pythons. It was ecological recovery. In areas where eastern indigos were established, researchers noticed something remarkable. Small mammal populations were stabilizing. Raccoon sightings increased. Bird nesting success rates improved. The ecosystem was responding. 
Not overnight, not dramatically, but measurably. The presence of a natural predator was creating what ecologists call a landscape of fear. Pythons weren't just being eaten, they were changing their behavior, avoiding areas with high indigo populations, spending more time hiding, less time hunting. This is exactly what scientists hoped for. Ecological restoration isn't about eradicating invasive species entirely, that's almost impossible. It's about re-establishing balance, creating pressure, giving native species a fighting chance. And the eastern indigo was delivering. So what does this mean for the future of the Everglades? Is the Python War over? Not even close. Tens of thousands of Burmese pythons still slither through the swamps. They're still reproducing, still devastating native wildlife. The eastern indigo snake isn't a silver bullet, it's one tool in a complex, long-term strategy. But here's what makes this story so important. It's a lesson in ecological humility. For years, humans tried to solve the python problem with brute force, hunting, trapping, technology, and we failed because we were thinking short term. We wanted quick fixes to a problem decades in the making. The Eastern Indigo approach is different. It's slow, patient, rooted in understanding how ecosystems actually work. It acknowledges that nature is complicated, that invasive species problems don't have easy solutions, and that sometimes the best intervention is helping nature help itself. This same story is playing out around the world. In Australia, Cane toads are devouring native species. In the Pacific, brown tree snakes have devastated Guam's bird populations. In the Great Lakes, invasive carp threaten to destroy fisheries. Every ecosystem faces these battles. Florida's experiment with the eastern indigo offers hope. Not because it's a perfect solution, but because it shows there are solutions. That patience works. That science works that we can restore what we've broken if we're willing to think differently. The Everglades isn't saved yet, but for the first time in decades, there's reason for optimism. Native species are recovering. Predator-prey relationships are re-establishing. The ecosystem is remembering how to be an ecosystem. And it all started with releasing one snake to fight another. The battle for the Everglades continues. Every day, python hunters work the swamps. Every month, more eastern indigos are released. And every year, scientists gather more data, refine their strategies, and push forward. This story isn't over, and neither is the fight to save ecosystems around the world. If you want to help, support conservation organizations working to protect native species and combat invasive populations. Share this story. Spread awareness, because the Everglades matters, and what happens here could change how we fight ecological disasters everywhere. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories about the natural world and the scientists fighting to protect it. Drop a comment below, do you think Florida's strategy will work? And what other ecological disasters should we cover next? Remember, nature is resilient, but it needs our help. Let's give it a fighting chance.